and it is 6 p.m. President Ziegler. Okay, uh, thank you everyone for coming. I'd like to uh, call the uh, continuation of the board meeting to order. I believe we need to take a roll call vote because we're meeting uh, remotely due to an abundance, an abundance of caution over COVID. Um, Terry, can you uh, take attendance Manager. for us? Um, Manager Crafton. Here, present. Manager Duvall. Present. Manager Cook. Present. Manager Pedersen. Here, here I saw her mouth go present. It's still <laughs> on mute. Unmute. There you go. <laughs> Manager Pedersen. Here. And President Ziegler. Present. All managers are present. Okay, so we had just come out of closed session, and I believe we're going to continue with the agenda and then come back to closed session um, when we have uh, a guest speaker coming back on with us. So that is, that is correct, Madam President Ziegler, managers. Um, Mr. Pressman has a 6 p.m. obligation, but felt that he would be here um, no later than 7 p.m. and perhaps even before. Uh, and Mr. Selke will also be joining us. So I believe the next item on the agenda was to authorize change order number two for conservation solutions. Is yeah. that correct? That is correct. President Ziegler? Manager. Yes. Yeah, so uh, um, Mr. Pressman, when he first approached the, the board aid, thought overall scope may approach uh, $30,000. Um, the managers initially wanted to just give him the scope to get going, so they authorized $10,000 um, with him to note the 50% and 75% milestone. They did the same thing with a subsequent uh, $10,000 increase, um, and now he is requesting one last increase to 10,000, which he believes is enough to uh, get through the remainder of the process, including any um, conservation easement discussions that would be need. The agreement was included in the packet. There is no subsequent changes to the agreement other than um, authorizing an additional expenditure of up to another $10,000, bringing the total contract to $30,000. And again, he will uh, inform me when he reaches 50% and 75% of that additional. President, President Ziegler? Okay. Yes, Manager Crafton. Yes, I'd like to move adoption of resolution 23-058 to authorize change order number two for conservation solutions. President can can you repeat that train? Uh, is that on the screen? I can't, I, the number's not on my notes. 23-058. That was okay, what we was... have a motion by Manager Crafton and a second by Manager Duvall. Do we have any questions or comments before we vote on this? Yes, Mr. President. Manager Cook. Um. What I'm, I, I'm wondering, I think I raised the question with Mr. Jeffrey about adding the resolution. I wasn't aware that a resolution was added, and I'm wondering what is their procedure for notifying people of changes to the agenda and the documentation. This resolution was included in the packet. I, uh... Well, it was not included in the packet when I copied it right from the website. Mm -hmm. So uh, that needs to be addressed in, in that regard. President uh, Ziegler? Manager Crafton? You might not, I'm not finished yet. I haven't yielded. Sorry. Manager Cook? 
but I, I do want to thank you, Administrator Jeffrey, from for going and preparing resolution as I've stated many times. I think it moves things forward if we have resolutions for proposed actions on each one of our action items. So thank you. Now I yield back. Manager Crafton. Uh, well, I printed it up when we had our other meeting. It was it was there, and there was a number. President Ziegler, um, Manager Crafton, no, I um, at the, when it was very first posted, uh, Manager Cook wrote to me asking for that resolution over that weekend. So that Friday that it was posted, it was not up there Saturday, Sunday. It went up on Monday. So anybody who looked at it. You know, on Monday saw it, but anybody who looked at it Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that's what Manager Cook is referring to. So, Mr. President. Manager Cook. And just my last comment. Uh, and, and I've made this comment before. I think if we, make, after the initial posting, if there are changes, particularly us managers, but all the staff, everybody, should be notified and something should be put on the website, you know, to indicate that there's been a change. If people go at it and look at it. I don't think we should expect them to go back to it every single minute before a meeting and expect to, uh, you know, to check out what it has or has not been changed. So I, I hope uh, Administrator Jeffrey will take that in mind and that the governance committee would look at that as part of the governance manual and it's straight administrative uh, uh, and I'll refrain from making a snide comment. Uh, so I yield back. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Is there any other questions or comments on the motion 23-058 um, before we vote? Mr. Smith, can we have a roll call vote on uh, the uh, motion at hand, the 23-058? Uh, yes, Manager Crafton. Yes. Manager Duvall. Yes. Manager Cook. I'm going to vote, vote no. Andrew Pedersen. She's muted. Yes. President Siegler. Yes. Motion carries four to one. Okay, I show the next item on the agenda as being the uh, Minnesota watersheds resolutions. That's a discussion item. Uh, Administrator Jeffrey, is that yep. correct? Yeah, President Ziegler, managers, um, in your packet, you should have found a cover memo as well as a memorandum from Minnesota Watersheds and three uh, separate resolutions. All of these resolutions are still active um, within the uh, Minnesota Watershed packet. There has been changes made to resolution 22-06, which is the um, resolution to limit weight bump activities. Um, what was added were additional citations for studies that were used, as well as information from both the state of New Hampshire and Vermont, one of those two little states um, who is looking to uh, Put in new who their citizen committee for legislature is looking at a new rule change right now, as well as Michigan that uh, their DNR has um, put forward a new rule. Um, Manager Duvall had asked me, given the um, given the aversion that many of the outstate um, watershed districts and organizations had about the flexibility and open meeting law, um, his. Their concern was always that they did not have the resources to do that. My understanding in, in speaking with um, Council Welch, who helped draft this, as well as um, reading it myself, there is nothing within this that 
compels anyone to do that. Uh, if they want to continue to meet in person, all of their managers in public, they certainly can, even as this resolution is written. Um, the soil health, I know Manager Crafton would like to, we talked last year a little bit, and we never circled back. I do know that she has some additional language she would like to see added to that. Uh, I will leave it to the manager's discretion if they would like me to work with Manager Crafton to incorporate that language or to leave as is. Um, I have spoken with Jan Voigt, uh, and if we can get it to her by October 1st, she will be fine with um, getting it in and getting everything processed. Okay, are there any uh, new uh, resolutions that anybody had that they wanted to get added? Ma Ma President Ziegler? Yes. Manager Cook had requested, and I would like to put it to the board, um, that we put forward a resolution uh, requesting that the state um, provide funds for, for conservation acquisition uh, properties. Manager Cook, I hope I didn't misstate that or put words in your mouth that weren't, weren't what you had asked for. Mr. President. Manager Cook. Uh, yes. Uh, we'll, we'll have a dis discussion, uh, take it in more depth later on, but uh, this, as other watershed districts have proposed resolutions, uh, to Minnesota, I guess, watersheds to fund certain uh, activities, et cetera. I think we should add a resolution uh, for uh, Minnesota watersheds to support the funding of the acquisition um, of the properties that we're going to be discussing today. Um, it's a, you know, I, as I said before, uh, I don't think our taxpayers should be bearing the burden of the proposal and that um, we should, uh, if we want to do an acquisition, we should be seeking uh, funding uh, from the Minnesota legislature, be it, be it from legacy funds or, or any other source uh, that we state or DNR, et cetera, uh, at their disposal. So it seems like there's an opportunity, I know it's a discussion item, but an opportunity for a resolution to revise one of the uh, resolution proposals for Minnesota Watershed and to add a second one. Um, do we have a motion to that effect or any other motions? I'll so move, Mr. President. Okay, I'll second the motion. Is there any other questions or comments? President Ziegler? So, Manager Crafton? So is this specific to us getting money or is this for more general for, for that funds be available to help LGs Manager Cook. Buy, Manager money, Cook. Or buy property. Manager Cook. My, you... my view is that we're, we're, I'm, I'm sorry, can you hear me now? I, I don't want to talk over people here. I think I was doing that. Sorry. I'll continue. Yeah. Uh, the intention here is to specifically fund the acquisition of the properties that we are discussing. Um, you know, so no secrets right in our minutes that we're discussing three parcels and acquiring them. And um, I, the resolution should say the for the uh, state and uh, state agencies to fund the entire amount of the acquisition of those properties uh, should the district enter into an agreement to acquire those properties. President Ziegler. Manager Crafton. So I have a question for um, Council Smith. Is there a precedent for something like this? Do you know? He's muted.
I apologize. I couldn't find the button. <laughs> um, so uh, I would say that uh, from time to time, in my experience, I have seen um, watershed districts from the Red River Valley bring forward uh, resolutions supporting uh, flood damage reduction uh, funding for um, projects generally, but specifically noting their need you know, for that funding. Um, occasionally, I think there are resolutions where an individual watershed district wants the support of the association for a, a, a local watershed district project. And um, so I, I think I would say it's not unprecedented. Thank you. Do we have any other questions or comments on the energy to well? So it, it, it seems that the, the basis for the question is to defer um, our question on whether or not we move forward. So I, I don't disagree that it would be maybe something to do with the future, but it feels like it, this is a deferring of the decision my opinion. Mr. President. Manager Cook. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure where the manager of the ball gets his feelings uh, from uh, point is, is for maybe better foot for Minnesota Watershed to support the state funding of the acquisition of the three parcels. And you know, assuming that they, you know, an agreement is reached to acquire those parcels. Thank you. Uh, is there any other questions, comments, clarifications? Mr. President. Mr. Smith. Um, I believe the draft resolution is the last page of the materials on the resolutions. And as it was drafted for the packet, it, the resolved paragraph, the first one, um, asks Minnesota watersheds to support a legislative appropriation to Bowser or Grant Hennepin County and, and its conservation partners for the partial funding of a conservation easement uh, for this project. And I believe from the discussion, Manager Cook was suggesting it be for the full funding. So I just want to flag that issue for your attention before you act on the resolution. And then the second resolving clause adds support for additional appropriations or similar undertakings by other watershed districts. Mr. President, so could we have uh, an uh, administrator blow up that vacuum? Not, not literally, but enlarge it as much as you can, remain a little larger. And where was the part you were referring to, Mr. Smith, regarding funding? So, and then now, therefore, be it resolved, first yes. one, that paragraph that's highlighted, the third line says to support, it's supporting partial funding of a conservation easement. I, I would suggest that it, it read that the support, uh, to support the funding of all or part of the uh, acquisition of Spring Road Conservation Project. I, I'm not, I don't know if conservation easement is the right way, but why tie our hands to limit this uh, on, on that basis? So my view would be that it would support, basically support the acquisition uh, of the, Springboard uh, Spring Road Conservation Project. Okay. So, full or partial, I don't see any reason that it asks for part of it. I don't see a reason to limit this. So, uh, I don't know if you, you have that in the word to Mr. Jeffrey. Could you try to make the changes I, I was speaking of? Uh, it is a PDF document. I could. Put a note in there. 
or whatever you want on the note on the side there. Right, right. And that now, now, therefore, be it resolved. Hereby support legislative appropriation. I wouldn't say it to Bowser or other entities. For legislation appropriation to Bowser or other entities for the purpose of, I'm sorry, I'll wait for you. It's always so much harder in PDF. For the purpose of? Uh, purpose of acquiring uh, the Spring Road Conservation Project. Uh, and, and I was thinking uh, whether whether through a conservation easement or otherwise. Right now, I have no idea what the legislature can do. Um, can you make your note a little larger, please? I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know if I can or not. Uh, no. uh, or other entities for the purpose of acquiring the Spring Road Conservation Project via easement or fee title. Does that capture what you're? Fee title would be would, would be fine. I don't know if that put anybody off. I don't know if anybody has uh, any opinion whether we're saying about. I was just saying saying to conserve each e conservation easement or otherwise. President Ziegler. Manager Crafton. So I think I would prefer the original um, language in this, um, basically because um, Bowser is supporting things where we have lots of partners. Um, and it's not like it's a a threat, um, like a like a flooding easements or floodplain that you're trying to buy to support to, to to prevent. So I think in this spirit of how Bowser operates and the emphasis on partnerships, the original language would probably, and then of course, then the last one, you know, to support other watershed districts and local units of government. Um, I just think that lends itself better to what the state has been doing. President Ziegler. Manager Patterson. I would agree with Manager Kraft. And I think um, the fact that it does say, please support all of the watersheds when they're looking for this sort of thing is absolutely necess uh, a necessity because you, you have to imagine there are a lot of watershed districts out there trying to do things. And if they got one of these for every project, uh, I, I just don't know how Minnesota watersheds would see that. So I think as long as it's in support of all, and I would also agree with Manager Kraft, and the only ones I've ever seen in the six years I've been involved have only been for the Red River Project, and I think it's because of flood mitigation, and where our scenario is different than that. So again, I, I agree with Manager Kraft. And Mr. President. Manager Kraft. I have no idea why the other managers want to tie our hands to doing that. Bowser isn't the be all and end all, uh, you know, in, in this regard. So why are we limiting ourselves? I don't recall any of the flood mitigation of the projects, you know, where Minnesota Watershed supported it at any reference to Bowser or anything else like that. So um, I, I don't think it's adding anything. Um, by adding Bowser and only to tracks of limits of the appeal uh, that we're doing that. So I I think we should be going with the language as I modified as I proposed. Okay. Um, so maybe it would uh, make sense to separate the two. Um, 
resolution. So we have the the land one the uh, uh, hap one and the uh, purchase of the property separately. Um, and if we do that, uh, then we can continue discussion on this one. Um, so to uh, Mr. Smith, is there a way we can back out of this? I guess I make a proposal to break the two uh, resolutions into separate and uh, see if I get a second for that. Is that right? Mr. President, I would say yes. I, we began with a motion by Manager Cook, seconded by you, to add soil language to the soil health resolution, as Mr. Jeffrey had outlined, and to adopt the proposed language about the uh, this resolution about the conservation acquisition. And then Manager Cook proposed revisions to that resolution, um, and we got into discussion about it without formal motion. But if you wish to separate, I would say then a motion to amend by um, taking, you know, deleting the conservation resolution from the main motion, just taking up the soil health language, dealing with that, and then a, a new language, a new motion to deal with this matter. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. What, what, what is the soil health thing? What are we? What, what is that? Why are we talking about soil health? I thought we were talking about the acquisition of, of in some way, shape, or form, rights with respect to the Spring Road Conservation Project. So maybe the I, original. Maybe I fell asleep and I didn't know it. The original motion had included both, but um, you know it's clear we're uh, not talking about the soil health. That was part of the motion. So separating the two maybe helps us get to a, a conclusion on at least one of them and gets us a little more time to think about the other one. So, Mr. President, could somebody summarize what, what is the soil health one? I, I thought we had it. I thought it had been adopted. We're thinking of changing some language now. Uh, I apologize. I'm just confused exactly what, what we would be voting on. President so, Manager Crafton, can you explain? Well, I'm confused too. You're not alone. Um, I thought that I was going to work with the administrator to, to see about what we were going to include, um, unless that language has already been dropped in. It is not. Was there okay. a yeah, so I didn't think we were. Mr. President? I'm sorry, who's speaking? Uh, uh, this is Manager Cook. Could, okay. could I, could, could we impose on uh, Administrator Jeffrey or or uh, her Administrative Assistant to uh, just type up in a Word document so we can blow it up and see it? Uh, if, if, if Manager Crafton has something to add to soil health, get it done with. And um, and if uh, you could just copy my proposed change to the uh, ac acquisition of properties or rights in those properties, if you can just copy that into a Word document so we can blow it up and we can see uh, what we'd be proposing. Let's see what we So this was the original the original resolution is drafted by the predecessor that went before a mod in 2020. Um, Manager Crafton reached out to me um, last year, right before this event, and said that 
you know, some language she would like to see added. Um, we have not incorporated that language, and I'm not sure what that language was. The other factor to think about at Manager Craft, and you probably know better than I, Bowser has made some adjustments um, to to their rules and their funding to fund um, soil health, but those changes are not made directly to 103B. They're made to their other programs. Perhaps it is something as simple as um, taking the language that Bowser has already done and extending it. Uh -huh. President Ziegler. Manager Crafton. So to Administrator Jeffrey's point, I mean, I know that there's, we just had come before the grants committee wanting to, to send more money, but it's gonna go to soil and water conservation districts, it sounds like, mm -hmm. um, which I've got a whole different context for that talk, but, um, so I would like to review this with Administrator Jeffrey and then based on changes that are being made at Bowser, try to figure out what the best way, what to best incorporate in this. But hopefully there would be time this next week to, to get that done and get submitted or how, I don't know, but. Might I recommend uh, President Ziegler managers that we remove this resolution. I reach out to uh, Jan Hoyt at uh, Minnesota Watersheds, ask her if we were to bring this to the October 4th meeting and give it to her on the 5th, if we could get this resolution submitted at that time, and then we'd work on the other three resolutions right now, the two that are already finished, and the one regarding uh, land acquisition, as Vanisher Cook had, had spoke to. Mr. President? Manager Cook. I, I have a slightly different approach. Uh, uh, I suggest that we consider a continuance of this meeting until sometime next week, giving Manager Kraft the opportunity to propose the changes that she wants to make to this, to the particular resolution on soil health. And that also then will give us time, um, uh, you know, I, anybody else can, uh, you know, address an alternative language for the having to do with the properties. Um, and then we could discuss those at that time. I didn't, I don't think that would take that long, but we could get it done. And I, I always think that if we could get it done before the first and help Minnesota Waters out, we would, it, it would be in our best interest. So, so what I'll do is I'll move that we lay these two items over for a continuance, and I'm going to throw out um, Wednesday, September 27th at 7 p.m. If you can give us a minute to check our calendars. Oh, yeah, you're in charge, Mr. President, so you let me know. Okay. Can you repeat the date? Yes, uh, September 27th, thinking at 7 p.m. That works for me. Does that work for everyone else? I will be at the Minnesota Watersheds SWCD joint meeting, but I don't think that there are any evening obligations for that. So I think I should be able to attend from Alexandria. Uh, Mr. President. Manager Cook. Uh, 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 Administrator Jeffrey, I mean, is, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to shorten it up, but I mean, we can do Tuesday, we can make it Thursday. What is there a, sometime that's best for you? President Ziegler, Manager Cook, I, thank you. I appreciate that consideration. I, I'm probably going to be bored in my hotel room anyway, so it might be a nice exchange. So Wednesday, Wednesday, I think, will be just fine. 
Manager Crafton, does that work for you? Um, yeah, when is the walk, the tour? Thursday. 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 All right, I've got an obligation at about 5.30 that day. Um, all right, I, and I'm confused about which two we're talking about. Uh, Mr. President, Manager Cook, I was proposing changes to the soil health resolution, and also at that time to be able to have one or more alternatives regarding uh, funding of, of some type of either acquisition or easement pertaining to the properties that we're going to discuss yet tonight. So I guess I'm thinking that it'll be quick. Um, we'll have the two resolutions to look at uh, with the proposed changes to uh, each of them separately. And we'll have that before the meeting. So it okay, should well, be pretty quick. President Ziegler. Yes, Manager Crafton. So I'm fine with the original amendment or resolution that was in place about the conservation funding. So I guess I'd like to know where everybody else is on that, whether there's really a need to go forward or not. So I guess from my perspective, um, I don't see any reason not to tweak it a little bit. Um, with regards to both of the resolutions to kind of customize them a little bit and um, make sure they meet what we're looking for. Um, and, you know, obviously we may not get exactly what we asked for anyway. Um, so it's just a request from or for uh, Minnesota watersheds to support. So, you know, it can be fairly general in that respect. But more specific, I think, helps helps the uh, Minnesota watersheds understand it better. Manager Crafton, did you have any further questions? No, I already stated my point, so. Okay. Uh, Manager Pedersen, are you available at that time? Uh, yeah, I'll make sure that I am. Manager Duvall, are you available? This is Wednesday the 27th at 7. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. So Manager Cook had made a motion to uh, delay the two resolutions and uh, continue them um, to a meeting that would be Wednesday, uh, September 27th at 7 p.m. So if we make this motion, we're not closing our current meeting, are we? Mr. President. Manager Cook. Uh, that was not my intent. It's just these two items would be carried over. So Manager Kraft could make whatever changes she wants to propose with respect to the soil health one. And I will make some, uh, come up with an iteration of the a motion regarding uh, requesting support for funding uh, acquisition or otherwise of the, uh, of the property we're going to be discussing tonight. Okay, so I'll second the motion. Um, do we have any uh, questions or discussions on the motion to uh, delay uh, these decisions to a continued meeting 
on Wednesday, the 27th at seven o'clock. Hearing no further questions, Mr. Smith, can we have a roll call vote on? Uh, Manager. On the motion to continue for these two resolutions, Manager Crafton? Yes. Manager Duvel? Yes. Manager Cook? Yes. Manager Pedersen? Yes. President Siegler? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Okay, thank you. Um, so that um, brings us to the uh, member reports. Um, and I believe that uh, Manager Cook had stated um, that he had some information for the member reports. Uh, yes, Mr. President, I have some things I want to go over on the uh, member report. So just give me one minute here. I'll pull it up. Sorry, Sorry, I can't find my mute. This is the regular managers. There you go. Okay, I'm 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 ready to go. Um, Manager Cook. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I was review. Uh, where I first concern is, you know, I had an occasion to review 103D 341 regarding rules. Um, I'm, I'm concerned that we are not following the notice and uh, in hearing requirements for rules. And this is going to pertain particularly um, to uh, having to do with permitting. And, you know, in my view, and, uh, and I'm sure Mr. Smith takes a different view, but I don't believe that we're following the, the law regarding adopting rules as they pertain to the permits in particular the fact that the uh, resolutions about delegating authority um, would be a rule, it would pertain to permits. I don't have any evidence of any notice or hearing to be held on that. So I believe that uh, delegation of authority uh, is basically ineffective. So that's my comment number, number one in my report. Uh, Number two, regarding the open meeting law, um, I note that at least uh, I believe the governance committee uh, at least noted on its uh, on the website that the document that supposedly they were reviewing. But I also but I also note that the other committees uh, have not, to my knowledge, been posting or making the documentation they review or discuss available to the public. And, um, as I interpret the open meeting law, as it would be applicable to open me, uh, to uh, Zoom type meetings. So uh, I urge the committees and council to work on coming up with processes and procedures that do not violate the open meeting law. Um, with respect to IT, I, everybody's probably seen the discussion about AI. Uh, I think it's uh, prudent for this district to uh, look into developing a policy and procedure regarding the use of AI. Um, I know it's it's all the rage, but on a legal in the legal corners, uh, it is a big deal, um, and I think we should be having a discussion. And uh, this goes back to what I've said before. I believe we need an IT consultant. I know this has been, uh, I guess nobody else is going to do it, but you know, as I said before, none of the managers nor none of the staff, to my knowledge, have sufficient, adequate information, resources, knowledge, training, experience to adequately advise us on our IT programs. And I think that's particularly applicable now uh, when we're dealing with uh, with AI. 
And uh, I'll just note that one of the uh, the policy proposals that a number of people have been tossing about is at a minimum adding a policy that anything's generated by AI be so noted in the document, et cetera, so people understand that it is, you know, AI and they can therefore decide what the value they want to put in, into any documentation prepared with AI. Um, the, the next thing I mentioned also having to do with, uh, you know, IT. Uh, I don't recall ever having received a briefing regarding our IT security, despite the fact that it's something that's, uh, I believe, is specified in state law. And, and also there's a special provision regarding doing so in closed session under the open meeting law. So I'm of the opinion that we need to uh, at least have a discussion as to what the extent of our security uh, systems are having to do with our uh, IT uh, systems. Uh, going down my list here. And, and I just want to be clear, I'm not saying that we necessarily have to have uh, somebody like Imagine IT doing certain things, but I do think we need somebody versed in issues pertaining to IT, particularly IT security and AI, and advising us. Um, and as I said, uh, most of the discussions uh, on the discussion board, so from a legal perspective, you know, recommends hitting up with policies having to do with the use of AI. Uh, next item that I, I will mention, and, and I'll print off this and submit it for inclusion in our, our minutes, but our website is in dire need of work. If you go into it, uh, maybe people who created it know where to look, but I think anybody else on the outside going would be hard pressed to find documentation. I think it'd be hard pressed to find the documentation actually that the Bowser rules actually specify that we make available on the website. And so I think an IT consultant would also be of assistance in making sure that uh, our website is at least compliant with the Bowser rules and hopefully more robust. There's a lack of uh, uh, interplay and connections in their website. Uh, you can get lost and can't find certain things without doing searches, and the searches aren't very helpful. Again, like I said, if you know where to look, you know where to look. You know, websites are not designed for the people who already know the stuff. It's designed for people who find information who don't know that information. Uh, I've said this before. I believe we need an HR consultant uh, at a minimum to review uh, our policies and procedures and make recommendations in light of recent legislation and court rulings, as I'm sure, well, as some of you probably know, there were significant changes with regard to uh, human resources and employment law, and those need to be considered and make sure that we're compliant with those, and I'm not confident that we are or will be uh, compliant with those. Having to do with HR, I've already mentioned uh, the issue of wages, and I've seen the discussion in the accounting and finance and um, I have concern that uh, the published guidance by on the IRS website is not being uh, followed. Um, we also bring to attention, we have federal minimum wage laws that I do not believe that we are complying with, uh, as I believe managers are employees, um, absent some so they can show me some ruling that's saying we're not uh, employees. And also, I think there's issues with regard to either the wage theft law or the payment of contractors. Uh, both require payment, well, wage theft requires payment every 30 days. Contractors are required to be paid every 45 days, if my recollection is correct. I believe we need to look into that and make sure that we're compliant uh, with those applicable laws. Um, with the, uh, it's the Data Practices Act, I've made a number of uh, requests for information and either have not received them or have received them only after a, what I believe is too long a period of time in which to respond. 
uh, and without you know an update as to the status of the request uh, in the meantime. And uh, uh, that's that's to the point where um, I think we need to do something about it, um, either by changing the person in charge of the Data Practices Act or making sure that such person complies with the with the law. Um, I have comments about our acquisition, but I'll hold those for that close the session. Um, already mentioned about the also report is my my concern is is we we did not have any of the auditors available to discuss the audit. And I am concerned we're going already going to end up going into uh, agreeing to hire some auditors. I think we need to seriously look at other auditors because if they can't muster having one person being available to answer our questions, uh, then I think we need to have other other auditors. And further, more than I pointed out before, I do not believe uh, that the auditors are following the requirements of the state auditor in particular. They're not uh, acquiring the information uh, under the uh, the, the legal checklist. At least I certainly didn't get any inquiry as to whether or not I thought we had any compliance issues. So I think uh, auditing is an issue we need to uh, we, we need to deal with. Um, and related to the budget and the audit, you know, and having to go through these documents. Uh, I come away with the conclusion that I believe uh, 103B having to do with levies and budgets is, is not being complied with. And I encourage the Accounting Finance Committee as well as Legal Counsel to review 103 Cap B.241 and the processes and procedures set forth there. Uh, particularly the requirement for a separate fund and the limitation of expenditures under that to preparing plans and for projects. And as I said, the requirement for a separate fund and account. Uh, I believe we're failing to follow that, that rule. Um, and with that, I will stop. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do any other managers have manager reports? So I I have one. I think this maybe leads into the administrator report, but I understand we're uh, scheduled to have uh, equipment and furniture for hybrid meetings um, that should be available for our October 4th meeting. Is that correct, Administrator Jeffrey? President Ziegler, managers, thanks for the tee up. Um, yes, so the interactive technology has been installed. Um, we are going to, as a staff, do a trial run of it this Monday with people in different remote locations to make certain that it is working relatively bug free. I'm sure there will be some hiccups along the way as we learn the system, but it is ready to go. The um, board table set up is to be delivered the morning of October 4th, which is the morning of the meeting. So assuming there is not a delay, we will also have the tables in place at that time. The system has two uh, 180 degree cameras, one that will face uh, the lectern and the audience and one that will face the board of managers and staff. There is remote control so that, um, that we can zoom or change frames. Um, the one uh, beyond that, so we'll have to have a dedicated staff um, to function that, and that will, in all likelihood, be Mr. Monahan, uh, Ms. Bacham initially until everybody's up to speed, and then uh, we'll be transferring those duties over to it. So, um, yeah, the short answer is we are ready to go October 4th with our next meeting uh, in person or a hybrid uh, as the managers see fit. And that's all I have for an administrator. Well, I will be at the Minnesota Watershed uh, slash SWCB conference uh, next week. 
Uh, it's also the MAWA um, annual meeting. Um, I am finishing up the statewide organization survey write-up and that will be presented to the administrators at that meeting and to the um, all of the board members um, in November at the annual conference. Mr. President. Manager Cook. Uh, you know, I would like to recommend that uh, if, you know, the equipment desk or whatever is only going to be delivered as on the day of the proposed meeting, that, that we hold the October meeting via Zoom and that we set up a a, a time for, or, or times when we managers can come in and look at the proposed uh, setup that Administrator Jeffrey has come up with so that we can um, uh, appreciate his design, et cetera, and perhaps make uh, suggestions. And I raise that because uh, although it hasn't hit the, uh, the top of the news yet, as we, I think most of you know, there is a new uh, variant of COVID. Um, we don't know too much about it right now, but it could well be uh, similar. I know that uh, they're already gearing up for at home testing, uh, more masks. And I realize there's some debate about effectiveness of maps, max, excuse me, for my pronunciation. So uh, perhaps in the meantime, I would, I would recommend we continue with Zoom for this next meeting, come in and take a look at the setup being proposed and then uh, and, and look for November as being our first, uh, I guess, in-person uh, meeting. Because I, if delivery is obviously was beyond Mr. Jeffries, or Minister Jeffries control. I would uh, ask, why can't we do the mid-October meeting hybrid? I, I agree with your information on COVID, um there's a new uh vaccine too that's supposed to be available but i understand that there's been some people that find out well it's not available where they wanted to get it so and also they're saying that COVID is still in the top five deaths in the u.s are being uh, associated with COVID. but um yeah, I, I think we need to get to hybrid. Um, and that doesn't mean everybody needs to be there. But um, yeah, we need to be able to do it hybrid. Um, Manager Cook? I, I agree with you. I think uh, if we're going to have the first in-person one or hybrid one, our second meeting of the month would make sense to do that at that time. Make sure that the equipment gets delivered and installed and set up. Okay. Does any other do any other managers have comments about the hybrid um, setup and starting the second meeting in October? Hearing none, the next item on the agenda is legal counsel report. Mr. Smith. Mr. President, uh, I will. I'll yield to Manager Crafton. Thank you. Um, I was muted and I was trying to say something, so sorry. Um, I'm in favor of doing the October 4th one in person and hybrid. So anybody, but I'm eager to get going. If we want to do, I'd like to get do the do the October 4th one in person. I don't know where everybody else is. Manager Patterson. Uh, I know how these tech installs go, and. If one thing goes wrong, <laughs> it's not gonna, it won't happen the right way. I think it's probably better to wait until our second meeting of the month, just because just getting all the kinks out of the system and everybody knows how to run everything, it'll take a little bit of time. 
just to make it run smoother, I I think I'd probably wait until middle of the month. I real I think it's probably better. Thank you, Manager Duval. Uh, I'm just wondering if if uh, if possible to it's it's going to take a little testing to run to work out the kinks as everybody's saying. Um, then maybe we, maybe we start with the uh, with the committee meetings again. It might it might take two or three meetings before it actually works like we think it's going to work. <laughs> and then secondly, uh, I got the first new vaccine for the new COVID thing on Monday, and it was it was the first one first grouping of people to get it at a Walgreens and on Tuesday out. <laughs> so anyway, just a, a statement, I guess, but it seems like wait until the equipment is there, number one, and number two, just be aware that no matter how much prep we do or how much we delay it, it's gonna. There's probably gonna be some kinks in it, so we should just start it when we can, when everything is there, and and just expect that we're gonna have some hiccups. President Ziegler, Mayor, Administrator Jeffrey. Yeah, um, I agree with the take because I admit there is a part of me that is nervous about having the very first meeting and then being embarrassed the whole time as as there are glitches. Um, but I do like Manager Duvell's idea of utilizing the committees as, I'll say guinea pig for last better word, but a living laboratory um, because there typically aren't uh, the same public um, participation in those meetings. So hopefully we won't um, displace people that would otherwise be trying to get in if we have those glitches. Thank you. So I think you know how to proceed at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Smith, you have uh, the uh, legal counsel report. Mr. President, managers, I have one matter to report on to you uh, that will be appropriate for closed session. And so when we get to the point of going back to closed session on the Spring Road properties uh, and for that motion, I'll add a second item that time. Okay, thank you. So the uh, other thing on the agenda is upcoming topics and then upcoming events. Uh, Administrator Jeffrey, is there anything we need to talk about on these? Um, just that our, our Creek Week is coming up and that's all of those events you see, the Soil Health Workshop, Ball Tour, Build a Rain Barrel, uh, culminates the gravel bed giveaway. Um, we'll have a cycle of the Creek uh, and then there's uh, Nine Mile Creek, and I believe it is uh, Minnetonka uh, is doing a soil health workshop. We're participating in that upcoming board tops. Topics should also include the governance manual um, updates, but that will likely not be until December. Um, that we'll have the uh, audit and finance will have that portion of the governance manual updated. So um, that's really it. Thank you. Any other questions or comments before we go into closed session? I guess we need a motion and a second on that. Yeah. I'll move we go into closed session. A second. Okay, the, we have a motion and a second. President. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Smith. I was just gonna say the properties. Okay. Um, my recommendation would be <clears throat> we go into closed session for discussing two items of district business. The first be uh, a lawsuit filed by Spring Valley Friends against the district and Rachel Contracting uh, for the purpose of giving the district uh, confidential legal advice uh, about that litigation matter. And then the second uh, uh, purpose for the discussion would be to discuss the potential acquisition of the property located at 9955 and 9875 Spring Road in Eden Prairie, and a third parcel adjoining it with it identified as PID 
So I, I think we had somebody that was going to make that motion. We have. Um, Me too. Okay. Any questions or comments before we vote? Hearing none, can we have a roll call vote, Mr. Smith? Manager Crafton? Yes. Manager Duvel? Yes. Manager Cook? Yes. Manager Patterson? Yes. President Siegler? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Administrator Jeffrey, can you let me know when everyone's back in, if there is anyone? Absolutely, they're joining right now. Okay, thank you. Once Ms. Herbert is in here, then we will have everyone. There it is, we have everyone. Okay, so I'll entertain a, well, do we have to give any kind of summary at this point? Saying no. no. Then uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, continue this meeting. Um, I forget the date, but uh, maybe somebody. Next Wednesday. 27th. Wednesday, the 27th at 7. So I'll make the motion to continue this meeting to Wednesday, the 27th at 7 o'clock. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second, any discussion? Hearing none, can we have a roll call vote, please, Mr. Smith? Manager Crafton? Yes. Manager Duvel? Yes. Yeah. Siegler? Yes. Motion carries okay. five to zero. I'd like to thank everybody for their time tonight, and uh, hopefully it was well spent. Thanks, Alex. Michael's left already, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Alex, very much. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, all. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Good night. Good night.